In the 2000s, you noticed a trend in the American psyche, the American po political circles, that the terrorists were Arab-looking or Muslim, or appeared to be Muslim-looking, or some combination of that. In the 2010s, the terrorists were the drug dealers and rapists, according to Donald Trump, that were coming across the border from Mexico. And now we are seeing a trend in the 2020s with rising transphobia that the terrorists are leftists and they are trans people. I think in the early 2020s we were seeing more of that it was the leftists. And we're still seeing the purging of leftists and this rise of a new red scare that has been existing for, you know, the later part of the 2010s and into the 2020s. But largely, it is now revolving around trans people. And of course, people are wanting to blame it on mental illness. And they're trying to make the correlation that being trans is somehow a mental illness. It's not. The two are very distinct and they are very separate. Many trans people do suffer from different mental problems, such as chronic depression, no shit, because gender dysphoria makes us very depressed. It makes us anxious. It makes us suicidal. So yeah, there's that. There's plenty of trans people that do have bipolar disorder or personality disorders, etc., etc. But that is not endemic to being trans. The hormones themselves do not make us mentally ill, Marjorie Taylor Greene. No. They are separate entities. One is gender dysphoria, one is mental illness. They are not the same. Gender dysphoria is not a mental illness. It is a disorder. It is no different than a person who has dysmorphia or a person that, you know, has some sort of bodily anomaly. It is a physical, medical issue, not a mental illness. And people really, really need to start understanding that. The other thing that I cannot stand is fucking liberals who, especially liberals in the trans community, who are basically saying that in the, an event like this, we need gun control, we need to disarm, we need to, you know, that we, you know, that we need this or that, like, no. In fact, this, if in anything, means we need to arm. Because the stigma and the backlash that we are already getting and will continue to get is only going to make things worse for us. Laws are going to be passed and trans people are going to continue to be oppressed. Why do you think that, you know, you know this, this event right here comes at a very perfect time for them? Because now they have an excuse to basically say, well, see, look what these trannies did. You know, we have to be afraid of, of these trans terrorists. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Transphobia is based in McCarthyism. Just like any sort of classism and misogyny under capitalism. It doesn't fucking matter. They're going to come after us, whether you're armed or not. But to basically sit there and say that 
violence is not the answer, that we shouldn't be armed, that, you know, it, no, we need to be. And we need to learn to get there soon. Voting is not going to help you. Do you think the Democrats are really going to ha have your best interests at heart? Do you really think they're going to sit there and protect you? No, they're not. They don't actually give a fuck about you. The only way to maintain our protection and to ensure our liberation is through acts of violence and revolution. At the bare minimum, you should have a gun to protect yourself. It's like, well, you know, but uh, they, they, it's only a short-term solution. It, it, only, it doesn't do anything to protect, you know, minorities against social oppression. I'm sorry. Have you ever heard of Nelson Mandela and the South African communists who fought for, what was it, half a century, served 24 years in prison for trying to liberate minorities from social oppression under apartheid. I think that liberation kind of paid off, even if it was only for a short term. How about the Bolsheviks who waged a revolution and a civil war and won? to liberate the working class and minorities, mind you. There was actually legalization of LGBT rights under Lenin. Stalin recriminalized it, but it was legal under Lenin. Lenin believed in liberating all forms of the proletariat. And it worked. They beat the Tsarists. They beat you know, back these incredibly nationalistic, aristocratic, and frankly fascistic people. They beat them. You know, what about the armed resistance fighters that fought against, fa against Nazi Germany, in France, in Germany, you know, in, you know, Scandinavia, people that fought against Italian fascism in Italy, People who fought the communists that fought against the nationalists, you know, in Spain. Okay, that one's a bad example. But you get what I'm saying. What about the Chinese communists that Mao led through the long march against the nationalist forces and eventually leading to the subsequent liberation of not only China from the Japanese fascist occupation, but from the nationalist Chinese. And say what you want about modern China, but point is, it was done. You know, what about the Black Panthers who essentially threw you know, and even Malcolm X, who threw their, you know, their, their violent rhetoric through their, their revolutionary fervor, kind of paved the way for people like Martin Luther King and his liberal BS. Martin Luther King wouldn't have even had a chance to freaking speak in front of, you know the people of D.C. in front of the, the, the nation had it not been for you know the Black Panthers bringing to light through desperation but through revolution or at least through revolutionary theory the, the idea that hey, black people are kind of being oppressed, they're kind of you know, the, you know it, you know, they're, be they're fucking being killed. It, that wouldn't be possible without the Black Panthers, who, by the way, were Maoists. So, don't sit there and say, oh, well, it's a, a, only a short-term short solution. 
No, history has told us it is a gradual process, but it is a long-term solution. And that it does actually liberate, that guns actually do liberate minorities from social oppression. Time and time and time again. Throughout history, particularly throughout the last 100 years, it has happened numerous times. The Vietnamese liberated themselves from French social uh, oppression. They, they liberated, liberated themselves from, from the oppression of imperialism and from capitalism, well, for a while. So, no, don't just sit there and say that it doesn't, because no, that's a lie. They have. It, guns have liberated. They are a long-term solution, and they do lift minorities out of social oppression. You fucking liberal cucks. Sorry to sound like a fucking conservative there, but it's true. See, that's the one thing I don't not even don't like, that I absolutely despise about liberals, especially from liberal trans people who buy into that crap, who think, oh, well, if I just vote Democrat, things will get better. No, they won't. The Democrats don't give a flying shit about you. Your liberation is only going to come from the barrel of a gun. Just like Mao said. You know what also Mao said? Protracted People's War. And it went basically something along the lines of how only through the liberation of the people and once capitalist, the ca capitalist class and capitalist elements have been eradicated from society will we no longer have war. And that's the point. It is the whole point of pursuing liberation through revolution, through revolutionary theory. And whether that's Marxism or whatever, you know, harebrained idea that other people think might liberate them, the point is, is that that is only going to come through violence, through revolution. It's only going to come through, you know, from the barrel of a gun. So, I don't know what else to really tell people. I don't know what else it's going to take for people to understand that. But, as Lenin said, fascism is capitalism in decay. And for the last 20, well, not 20, but the last 15 years, capitalism has been slowly decaying. It's had its rises and its falls, but it's going through another rough patch in the 2020s. Capitalist powers, major influential powers of the 20th century, like the United States, like the UK, are losing power, and they are resorting to more and more draconian, fascist, and totalitarian means to keep that power and control. I mean, look at the state of the U.S. media, for fuck's sake. It, it basically is a propaganda machine that, you know, whether it doesn't matter if it's MS, MSNBC or CNN or Fox, they all, to their own degree paint minorities in a negative light because they are they are the media arm of the coercive arm of the state so it's up to us to liberate ourselves with guns political power grows out of the barrel of a gun it just depends on what political side you choose to be on. Oh, and also, if you choose to be on the side of the gun, or 
whether that's in front of it or behind it. I'm Red Pagan Nicole, and this has been Red Pagan Corner. Super